Timothy was really tired that evening. He fell asleep almost the moment his head touched the pillow, and he wouldn't have woken up until the morning had it not been for that strange noise. Now that he was awake, he could no longer hear the noise, but he noticed something else. As he looked carefully around the room, he realised that not one single object was familiar to him. He was not in his own room. A growing fear cleared his mind of the last remnants of sleep. Images from the journey began to flow through his mind, and suddenly he knew where he was. the room began to take on the impersonal shape of a hotel room. It's just like any other hotel room, he thought, and this holiday will be just like any other holiday. Or will it? He fell asleep again. The noise had seemed so real to Timothy, yet now it was gone again. He noticed his father on the balcony and decided to ask him whether he had heard it too. But no, not only had his father not heard it, but he tried to convince Timothy that he hadn't heard it either and that it was only his imagination. It was probably the journey and the excitement of the first day on holiday. However, Timothy returned to his room anything but convinced. He knew he had heard something. But what? At breakfast the following morning, Tim talked enthusiastically about how real the noise had been and what it sounded like. His mother and father didn't seem to take much notice of this. But someone else did. The waiter was very anxious to hear all the details, but he didn't offer any possible explanations nor did he say why he was so interested in the matter. Wandering along the beach in the afternoon, Tim noticed a cave. He felt an urge to swim to it and look inside. But he soon changed his mind when the lifeguard told him of the strong currents inside the cave. Timothy asked the lifeguard if the cave led anywhere in particular and was told that it didn't really go very far in, at least not above water level. He also learnt that the entire peninsula was crisscrossed by underground streams and caverns. Then the lifeguard said something that Tim didn't understand at first. Who knows? This cave might even lead to the gold of the legend. Tim obviously hadn't heard of the legend. The lifeguard then began telling him of the monk in medieval times who, according to the legend, discovered the secret of making gold by some chemical process. He worked in one of the caves below the monastery. The other monks thought he was doing something unholy, particularly 
because of his association with an outlaw from the area. So they went away one by one until the monk was left on his own. It was then, according to the legend, that his friend, the outlaw, killed him and ran off with the gold. But the monk had made a lot more gold that the outlaw knew nothing about. And since that time, whenever there's a full moon, the monk's spirit returns to the cave to watch over his gold. Some people swear that they've heard strange noises at night when there's a full moon. But of course it can't be true. It's only a legend. Timothy remembered his experiences of the night before, but said nothing to the lifeguard. He thought it better that way. Timothy decided to investigate the cave, and that night he stole out of the hotel room and climbed down the winding staircase to the beach below. He then walked cautiously over the rocks towards the cave entrance without noticing that he was being followed. At the mouth of the cave he stopped for a moment. The side seemed very steep and he began to wonder if it was possible to go very far into the cave without the risk of falling into the water. He took a deep breath and went in clinging cautiously to the rocks. But soon he came to a halt. There was a huge flat rock in front of him that seemed to cut the cave tunnel off abruptly. He ran his hands over its smooth surface as if to make sure that it was really there. And then... He didn't panic at first, but as he tried to surface again, he found he was being dragged under the rock by the current. Now he was really frightened. He floundered about helplessly until he found himself floating in an underground stream on the other side of the flat rock. He grabbed hold of a rock to stop himself from drifting further into the cave and pulled himself out of the water. He lay there exhausted for a few moments and then lifted his head and looked around. He saw that he was inside a large dome-shaped cave with a huge sculptured fountain in the middle. The fountainhead rose majestically towards the cave ceiling. Timothy was surprised at the amount of light in the cave. 
Then he looked up and saw the answer. The familiar face of a full moon was inching its way across a hole in the cave ceiling. Timothy looked quite bewildered. The cave had returned to normal. Or had it? He looked closer. There were torches on the cave walls, burning. Timothy started towards one of these to have a closer look, but stopped dead in his tracks when he heard men's voices. He glanced towards the fountain and saw two men who seemed to be having an argument. One of the men was obviously a monk. But the other... Suddenly, a knife plunged into the monk's chest. The other man turned and shouted in the direction of the fountain. But then he too was struck by a knife. The big burly man fell down, still cursing the fountain. Seconds later, a third man appeared from behind the fountain. He sat down on a stool at the base of the fountain and looked like someone who was preparing to operate some strange machine. The burly man had not enough strength left in his arm to throw the knife. Timothy then heard the monk's weak voice. Don't worry, my friend. He can't use the time machine. I've seen to that. I've seen to it. Just at that moment, the third man pulled a lever. <laughs> Then all was dark and quiet. Timothy ran towards the spot where the wounded monk and his friend were lying moments before and in the semi-darkness stumbled across two skeletons. He glanced towards the fountain and saw the skeleton of the third man. Oh. 